Oh my lordy lord. <laughs> oh man, this is embarrassing, but I told her I would do it, so what the hell, right? <laughs> Ridiculous this looks. Hey guys, uh, sorry about the uh, lighting is a little off tonight, but we're using the um, the uh, phone to do our streaming tonight. Hopefully everything looks okay. Is the sound okay, uh, Tom? Just let me know if you don't mind. I'm going to pop out the uh, channel chat over here so I can actually uh, see you guys at the same time. Hopefully, just give me one second. Hopefully, this will work. I haven't tried it this way before, but uh, theoretically, I should be able to uh, hopefully get this. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny. My mother, uh, as lovely as she is, this likes to... She likes to send me um, hats all of a sudden. It's like her thing. So she decided, I guess, for the derby, uh, hence the little jockey glasses. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> and I'm built just like a jockey, believe me. Um, that uh, it would be a good idea for me to wear this. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> oh, man. Let me see if I can get this chat popped out. Sorry for the delay. Uh, give me one second. If it doesn't work out, it's not a big deal. I'm not doing it from the... Uh, computer like I usually do I'm doing it from a phone but I'm trying to use a spare computer I've got to uh to pop it out but I'm not going to worry about it I can see some of the some of the comment bubbles if I miss your comment uh don't worry I'll come back and get you uh, when I get a chance and uh I've got some news to tell uh thankfully I had a really good time at the whiskey fest now was it the whiskey fest itself that, that was the good time no surprisingly um, I did have a chance to go last, I think it was July, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Scotch for Dummies, but I think it was July we went to Indianapolis with you guys, or was it April? I can't remember which month it was, but it was last year. I had a great time. Um, it was expensive, but it, for the VIP, I think it was worth it because they really had a lot of good pours, and a lot of good distilleries were there, and uh, Thanks for the uh, the shout out to Lee G there, Tom. Uh, he had some fun. It took him. It took me a lot of convincing to get him to get on camera. He's not a a camera guy, but I'm glad he did because he's got a lot of knowledge. He's he's got a lot of experience tasting a lot of different whiskeys. So uh, it was well definitely welcomed uh, to be on the channel. And I'm gonna be doing some. Um, they agreed that they would be interested in maybe doing some Google Hangouts uh, over the air in the future. So if I can hook up a time with Lee and with Generously Paul, uh, maybe we can do some uh, live Google Hangouts together at the same time. Now, if I can't do it this time, since they do have some strange schedules, uh, Lee's job makes it where he has to work um, on different hours that are not normal. Like he might have like a Tuesday, Wednesday off one week and... Uh, or for a few weeks, and he might have another set of off days. So I've got to um, take that into account. But we'll organize something and hopefully have something entertaining and, and you know, at least educational for you guys. Uh, I know with thorough knowledge alone, uh, these guys are masters, so it's well worth it. Uh, to tell you a little bit about the festival, if you didn't catch the um, the live show when we were doing it uh, the day before, uh, it was it was fun. We uh, Lee and and uh, Paul brought some extraordinarily good dreams. We had the Fine Oak, uh, McAllen Fine Oak 21, which is the star of the show to most of them. I think I might have preferred the um, the Ardbeg 20-something uh, to 23, basically. I love the uh, 23. It was uh, it was amazing. It was uh, fantastic. I got the, the note on the angle there. Y'all had to play around with the, uh, the setup and see if I can get a different angles and make it a little more interesting i guess at least anyway but um but we uh they, they i brought like a Lafroid care just 2014 on matiata wood we had an excellent time when we got to the, the actual expo itself um there wasn't as many good vip pours surprisingly for dc uh compared to indianapolis which really boggles my mind i even heard chicago had a hell of a a good show. Uh, DC got kind of shafted, in my opinion. Um, Lafroig was like the biggest distillery, in my opinion, that was coming next to Ardbeg. And uh, like Diageo, uh, Lagavulin, Glenmorangy was there, um, Glendronic. But, but Lafroig was like the big pool because they weren't at the one in Indianapolis for me. And 
I was excited because on their VIP list, they said we'll have the 25, the 27, and the 30. And we'll have the new carriages. And we were all like, wow, this is going to be the best, you know, VIP experience ever. So I, I thought, you know, well, we even were so excited. We were planning out what's, you know, the strategic way of getting these great pours. Uh, are we going to go, you know, of course we're not going to hit the peak, but last, but we don't want to be fools and miss the opportunity to get that, uh, that Lafroy, you know, 30, 27, 25. It'd be, it'd be an idiot not to, to figure out a way to get it done. So we planned it out where we're going to go to Old Pulteney first. So we went to Old Pulteney. I got the 35, which was a VIP pour. And I have to tell you guys, uh, I know that, you know, for a 35 year old whiskey, you got to give it time. You got to, you know, do all that. But, you know, out of the gate, if something's going to be what you're expecting, if it's going to be good. And I have to say, there was a lot of soapiness to that dram. And to me, and even Lee was kind of like, uh, Paul was, was saying we probably should give it more time and all that. And I understand, but, you know, if, if something's good, I mean, I let it sit in the glass for a bit, you know, I, I tried it with water, without water. I didn't like, you know, bam, shoot it and, and leave. I had to like, you know, I took my time a little bit with it, but, uh, it just wasn't for me. The 25 from Old Pulteney is fantastic. Now that reminded me of the 17, which I already love. So if you're looking for the new, uh, Old Pulteney, which it looks like they're doing a 12, a 25, a 35 and the Navigator, I think is their core, which is kind of crazy to me that they're shooting up their years so high. Uh, I would stick with the uh, the 12 and maybe the uh, 25 if it's affordable. I don't know the price point. It makes me kind of scary. Uh, good job ordering that. Um, <laughs> good job ordering that uh, Glendronic uh, 8 to Highland. That's uh, going to be a really good buy, my friend. Uh, I, that was... I mean, for the money, that was a star of the show. I mean, comparatively, even to the black arts and the maturity and the, the elegance of the fine art, the uh, fine oak twenty one by McAllen, that Glendronic eight for thirty five forty bucks is so good. Yeah, thanks. I already explained to him um, what this was all about, so I think we might have to switch hats. Actually, <laughs> we might have to switch it over. And, and uh, yeah, it's that time of year. It's Derby time, so. Thankfully, she sent me a proper hat, so we'll just uh, flip it on over to the to the other one. <laughs> That's I call this. I mean, this is gonna be my new uh, my new snack holder. It's gonna be my. I have to wash that puppy out a couple of times. That's gonna be my snack holder. But um, make a long story short, very good pours. The one of the memorable pours of the night was the Holland Park The Dark. If you're a Holland Park fan, save your pennies now because The Dark is a 17-year-old, great, fantastic-tasting whiskey that all three of us were just drooling over after we had it. I mean, I, I was tempted to go back and get another pour because it was so good. Uh, only did not do that because of time. Uh, Ardbeg had a seminar at the end. It was really good. Uh, they gave out the uh, the Grooves uh, Committee release, the Dark Cove Committee release, the... Um, Kelpie committee release, the original, just the regular tin, and one more I'm not remembering. Oh, the NO, the new one. So um, that was um, that was a, a good uh, seminar, and they talked about the history of Ardbeg and the problems with the 90s, and uh, got to ask a couple questions like, you know, one of my questions was if you're not a, a big fan of Ardbeg, you might not know that they actually had an unpeated version called Gildalton that was available in the 80s. I knew that because I've done a lot of research. They've had two versions of Kildalton, one that was a newer one that was peated. The old one was unpeated. Uh, it, it seemed to do pretty well, and I was curious to see if they would ever be, you know, thinking about releasing an unpeated whiskey again, and the answer is yes. The uh, the uh, brand ambassador was there, and uh, the, the dark is nothing like the full volume. Uh, I saw that question pop up. The, uh, the Highland Dark is nothing like the uh, full volume. Full volume is a bourbon, uh, straightforward uh, dram. It's about 70, 80 bucks. It's, uh, you know, I've heard it's good. Uh, I saw Whiskey in the Six Rob review it recently. He thought it was good. Uh, I like the straight bourbon, uh, the, the Springbank 14 bourbon wig cast. So it might be comparable to that. Maybe not as good because I know it's like a, not an age statement. It's probably a, well, actually I think it is at least 10 years old. I'll take that back. But, uh, 
I don't know if it's going to be as good as that, but the dark is a mix of uh, a little bit of peat and sherry. It's a really good balance, more closer to maybe like an Oogadol type of dram. So, uh, hey, thanks for stopping by, Bobby Purnell. Hope you uh, are having fun, and thanks, Richie. Uh, you, you missed a lot already, but uh, hopefully you can rewind and watch the uh, early part of the show later on. Anyway, but uh, where was I at uh, before the uh, answering the uh, Holland Park question? Um, I was talking about the, uh, what was it? That's the only problem with answering questions. <laughs> Sometimes I get sidetracked. But uh, it was a good experience. Uh, we talked about the dark. Or we're talking about some other dreams that we had that were memorable. Uh, but overall, I actually enjoyed the experience back in Indy more than I did uh, this one. But the pours that Lee and Paul brought made it a lot oh the dark is is a lot better than the dark origins night and day difference to me but also as the price the dark origins runs about a hundred dollars 80 to 100 uh as the full volume but the dark is we're talking like two or three hundred dollars so it's it's a pricey it's a pricier dram um it's more in the lines of like their uh, uh odin thor kind of uh bottlings um their fire ice that they're not, it's that caliber of dream really it's it's up there but it's well worth it if you can uh, you know if you can afford it it's uh one I, I would suggest saving up i mean it might take you six months a year to save up for it but i think it's one of those special bottles that you'll enjoy for a holiday a big occasion you know that's i would be all over that so let's get a dram because i'm getting thirsty because i haven't had anything for a while i was warming up with the uh one of my favorites. I better make sure this bottle doesn't go anywhere because I don't want any other accidents. I'm, I sent my computer off today to get fixed. So our lighting and, and everything will be back to business here, I'm hoping, uh, within maybe seven, eight business days. Uh, the 25 worth of money. If Now, this is the funny thing. Uh, the 25 is good. Is it worth, the? I think it's like $500, $600? I, I would say no because there is a bottle of a, a creative whiskey company has a, a 25 Highland Park cast strength for 275 that is actually better than the regular 25. So that answers your question right there. So if you can find the creative whiskey company's version of Highland Park 25 cast strength, pow, there you go. I would jump all over that uh, before the regular version, but that's just me. I warmed up with this guy earlier. That's that Hazel Burn Barolo, um, the nine year matured 57.9 excellent bottle uh, i'm enjoying this one it doesn't show it since I, there's a lot left but i just got back from being out of town and i didn't have this with me so that's why there's so much left <laughs> there you go yeah a thousand dollars is way too much for that bottle i mean it's good it's uh, think of the um the 18 holland park with a lot of tropical uh fruit it's it's very uh well done the 18 is no joke it's the, one of the best whiskeys ever made uh, think of that with some more tropical influence in it, and that's what the 25 is, basically. So if you can imagine taking that, um, I always like to, to use the Balvini 14 Caribbean cask as a good tropical flavor. I'll say take the 18 Highland Park, mix that with the, the Balvini Caribbean 14. You might be able to get a, a poor man's version of the... Um, of the uh, Holland Park 25 if you do your blendings correctly. So there you go. Yeah, the 18's, for the value, it's a much better bottle anyway. So I would much rather get an 18 uh, than anything else really. Wow, $400, yeah, that's a good price. Because usually I've seen that five to $600. I think Lee, uh, when he, uh, he, I was lucky enough to get a sample from him. I think he said he had to spend like five or six, uh, if I'm remembering. Now here's a story for you that, that will, I'm gonna reveal what I'm gonna be looking at tonight. Uh, the first bottle was a, uh, a sample from Mr. Lee. We're gonna look at the Black Arts 5.1, the uh, 24 year, 48.4%. Thank you, Lee, if you're watching. I don't know if you're watching now or after the fact, but um, I had a great time drinking this in the uh, before the expo. I've had it uh, previously once, and uh, I'd love to do a review of this, and I know it's going to be a good one. So, uh, a little pricey. It's about three twenty-five, but um, well worth it to if you can save up. It's I mean sometimes it's worth waiting to get that special bottle. You know, it's just the way it is sometimes. Uh, 
Now this was just a pure luck. I hate to do a review on this almost because I know a lot of you won't be able to find this, but I was so excited because I found two bottles of it in one day that I just couldn't resist. Yeah, the Lord Freud eight freaking team. <laughs> now, it, I looked this up on secondary market, and this is going. I, I, I kid you not, three hundred dollars a bottle. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I found this for ninety dollars, and it had two of them. They had two left. I was like, you got to be joking me. Dusty as hell. And and the funny thing was, I was like, oh, these are interesting. And I pulled it out, and I'm like, oh, well. I had to have a little, you know, I was kind of wiping it off a little bit. Oh, he's like, oh, let me get that for you. And he took the, the, the canister and he's wiping it all off and, and, you know, wiping it down. Hey, Tosh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I need to call you, uh, by the way. We need to hook up, um, I'm trying to think, tomorrow's Friday. I'm teleworking tomorrow. I, I know you said you'd be free Sunday. So hopefully we can um, uh, figure out a meetup point on Sunday. Tosh was gracious enough to bring me a couple of samples. He said, uh, I don't know what they are yet. He might've mentioned it to, to me at the expo, but it was so loud and crazy that I, I didn't even process probably what was going on. I apologize, but, uh, we're going to hook up and, uh, hopefully meet up, uh, maybe, um, Sunday. And I'm trying to think of what's open on a Sunday. This might be interesting. Uh, it's hard to find places open, but I'll, uh, see what I can do. Uh, worst case scenario, maybe uh, another time, but we got to uh, hook up and uh, have some fun. Oh, Linkwood 19, that's right, Linkwood. As soon as you said Link Linkwood, I was like, oh, man, that's going to be good. I haven't had a Linkwood yet, so that's like right up my alley. But I found two of these puppies. Can you believe that? For like 80, I think it was like 89. I'm like, I, I cannot say no to that. And uh, last two that he had, and I, 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 I want to get a 15 and match this so badly. Oh, man. So we're going to have to open that up here in a second. Um, but let's start out because you never want to start with your peat like that. I mean, even though it's, I've heard it's a milder peat, but I've heard also um, one of the great distiller reviewers, his name is Cast Code, he um, talked about the fact that he wants to uh, really take his time with that bottle and let the peat get released. It's more of like... Yeah, you might, if you just pour it and you, and you, even if you wait 10, 15 minutes to start sipping, it might, you know, not be the best. So actually, let's go ahead and pour and let it sit for a bit while we're talking, because I don't want to, I don't want to give you guys a, the wrong idea with this guy. I want it to be a legit, well done, proper pour and let it do the deal while we're doing the Brook Lottie, um, the Black Arts. So that would be... A better thing. What's everybody else drinking? Let me know in the comments there. And uh, Lee's already trying to, to get me to uh, trade uh, for this one. He said the the Glendronic peated portwood, but I'm like, it's okay. It was pretty good, but I don't know about that, man. I don't know if that's. I mean, he's 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 been very generous with his pours, so I feel bad not saying yes. But at the other hand, I'm kind of like. Wow, that's not that's not quite the same, but maybe maybe we'll I'm sure we'll work something out. I'll probably just just uh, I don't know. I'll just probably just take it because he's been so generous over over just this past six months of of uh, you know experience in the distilleries with each other. I'm gonna have to pour behind this. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for stopping by, man. Ooh. Had to have a sneak, a sneak nose <laughs> from the cork. <laughs> it's that good. Let's get us a nice big pour of that guy. Cause that's gonna be our closer. And we're not gonna put that anywhere near the computer or the phone. We've learned our lesson. <laughs> sneak nose, that's right. And we're gonna put that on the floor so it can't knock over or get Mark Broda nose time. That's patented, by the way. Mark Broda has a patent on that. Oh. <laughs> you got to do that to a little Freud, too. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Okay, so let's get uh, another glass. And I think I got one right up here. For this one, let's use a dragon glass. These are always fun. 
don't know if I showed you guys this before. I got this, uh, won this off of a Scotch uh, Test Dummy show, answering some trivia questions or something. And uh, I love this thing too. I gotta get me some of those Taylor Milestones that uh, Scotch uh, Four Dummies have. I don't have any of those yet, so that's something I'm gonna have to just uh, reach out and try. This is another one we're gonna have to let just set just a little bit, but not not a uh, not as crucial on this guy. This is good out of the gate. I mean, I've had this the four point one, and I've had the five point one or five point is it five point or five point one? I can't remember if they do it them all in ones or what, but I know the four is a nineteen ninety. I don't remember the year in this, but I know it is a twenty four year old. So. I can't remember if the other one is a 24-year-old or not as well. Oh, you're having the Kalila 12. That's an excellent choice, man. A really good smoke. I like the smoke on the Kalila. Uh, and especially if I'm not really in a heavily peated mood. Like, a, you know, sometimes you do want that body Lafroig or you want more of a, a milder Lagavulin. But sometimes you just want a real deep smoke. And that's what you get from a Kalila, I think. It's kind of um, the spectrum, you know. The, the smoky end is the Kalila. The Ardbegs and the Lagavulins are, are, well, Ardbeg actually has more PPM if you want to be technical, but the taste is a little more refined in an Ardbeg for the peat phenol level. So that's your, that, and that's your Lagavulin. And then on this side, the PD side, you go for a lure or a tin cast strength, and it's like, burst your peat for you. And that's, uh, that's always good. <laughs> This is excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame because we had more fun, I think, hanging out as buddies at the um, at the hotel before, you know, we went to the actual festival. So we actually talked about it. I think, I don't know, I think we're, we might not do festivals uh, anymore uh, be, just because of the letdown of the price. It was like three fifty for a VIP ticket, and that's just crazy money um, for, you know, the hassle and the, the hustle and bustle of registration and the uh, dealing with all those people at the same time and thankfully it wasn't as crazy as indies i mean when you started with indies it was so packed you couldn't move for like uh the first 20 minutes were tolerable but that from a half hour to an hour it was so packed you could barely move and i had a sports coat on and on that one that was that was rough so this time i was smart enough to go with just a nice you know a nice buttoned up shirt and uh some decent slacks uh, didn't you know go with the jacket felt a lot better as far as that goes and there was less people but it was still kind of a calamity just to find you know the right uh, booth for the right dream and all that so we we might do a, a like our own group we might start like a group where we just pick a, a city uh, Paul is in Michigan uh, Lee is luckily closer to me he's in Virginia right across the uh, the state line so uh, Lee and I live closer together probably like three or four hours uh, but Paul is way up in Michigan uh, Prane lives in New Jersey and Scott lives in New York so we might have to find like a universal place uh, in the middle somewhere or just pick somebody's pad maybe one year and just do you know pick a pick a place and meet up and, and it'd be kind of cool to do that with some of the you know people that come by if you even if you don't review if you just enjoy scotch maybe we could try to find a, a, a time i know the scotch for dummies is test dummies have been talking about a, a dummy con kind of thing a dummy con that would be awesome but uh, uh it's hard i know to plan you just sometimes you just have to pick something and see who shows up and and let it fly <laughs> If it's one or two, that's great. If it's, you know, 10, 12, uh, just make sure you have the facility to house all those people, I guess. That's the that's the thing. Yeah, I like the, the reason I like, I mean, typically I wouldn't use this glass to do, um, oh, sorry, Loch Ness, uh, I agree. Uh, I've been to a few Ness Carices. Um, I missed part of that because the unfortunately using the phone, the, the uh, bubble goes away. But I think you were just agreeing with what I was talking about. But, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, you just got to pick a city and, and find a decent place that can house, you know, 30 people or so, uh, maybe a good bar uh, that has a lot of scotch or something, Jack Rose or Birds of a Feather, something like that, and, uh, you know, maybe have like an after party at somebody's place if they can, you know, hold 10, 5 people and 
just go go for it, you know, enjoy some scotch. That's what it's all about. Anyway, but typically I wouldn't use a glass like this um, for a scotch. I would just stick with the tried and true Glencairn. But this is not bad for if you want some air to get to your scotch, uh, but you still want to have that direct nose where you're still, you know, able to really get a good nose out of it. This is this is pretty damn pretty damn good. Uh, you just have to get used to leaning it to its side when you sit it down. That's the only uh, downfall to it. Uh, they're pretty uh, they're pretty hefty when you fill them. But uh, I remember I forgot who it was. It might have been the whiskey vault. I saw them doing like a test where they were dropping glasses by accident, seeing what would break versus wouldn't. The Glen Karen, of course, is a sturdy glass that uh, I don't think that one broke as well as like the tumblers and these glasses even even though these look thicker if I remember correctly I have to go back and look at that one just to see but um, but it's it's kind of something good for something a little different too oh it's a nice nose I, I'm gonna have to I don't have one of my uh, my Glen Karen hats nearby but I'm gonna have to use my hands on this one get get kind of a good flavor out of it the uh, Brook Lottie is one of my favorites. Uh, even for their unpeated stuff, like the, the uh, it's uh, crazy that, it, I mean, it's such a well-designed glass, I think. Uh, I mean, Scots know how to do it right. Uh, and the weird thing is, it looks, you know, it looks like it would ha have, I need to use my jockey hat again. <laughs> well, uh, back by popular demand, we'll go back with the jockey hat. <laughs> as ridiculous as this is. Oh wow, he really, really gets some nice, deep, ruby-rich fruits off the, the, the Black Arts 5.1. It's, it's fantastic. And they're off, that's right. And, and it gets a little, I, I wouldn't call it smoke maybe, but, but there's some sort of like, um, I don't know if I have to go as far as leather, it's not like a, a deep, um, like a spring bank type of leather more maybe more of a heather is what i'm trying to say more of a of a a really nice deep floral floral note in with the fruit really well balanced you get like a a, a mustiness like a really nice uh it's kind of reminds me of when I, I had that fine oak 21 from the mccallan like someone opened a an attic uh, door of an antique shop that had just really nice things in it and that real musty old school smell it's just I, I, I do like that in the scotch if it's done well and it, this has some sweetness to it you get some sugars in there oh lots of deep cherries strawberries raspberries red i mean tons of red berries that's the the, the most intense i think note that you get out of this one i mean you, you can sense the alcohol but it's not like overwhelming by any means um would not touch it with anything at first uh, i think it was a what is it a 48.4 uh it's got a little room for maybe a couple of drops if you're wanting to play around with the flavor and whatnot, but really, mead is, is, is so perfect for this stream. Some cinnamon spices in there too, some really nice, uh, I mean, the cinnamon's more subtle, I'd say it's got more of a, maybe a little bit of anise, a little bit of uh, nutmeg, like an allspice kind of thing really well done let's see if, I, if I'm hitting some of the notes that I, I've, I've actually done a review of this on um, distiller I think I might have been looking at the 4.1 but uh, yeah it's, it's a tough it's a tough price point and um, like the scotch for dummies were saying I need to, to also go back and hit a couple just straight off um, drams that are a lot easier to uh, get it's just that when I get some of these really special ones it's really hard not to do a review when you get the chance to do it um, that was the, the main reasoning but I am going to uh, well I did the Helen Park 12 last week so I kind of made up for that I think with uh, I try to mix it up you know go with a high end a middle go in the entry level kind of mix it up a bit 
don't do the typical ones that often uh, as well to make it interesting. But uh, let's see if uh, let me do uh, Brooke Lottie here. B R U I C. There we go. Uh, one second. Tapping with one uh, finger is interesting. <laughs> here we go. Just scroll down here in Black Arts 4, 5.1. I don't, I don't think I did a, a specific review for that one. I think I did it for the 4. Um, I should maybe do it right up a new one, but it's very, very similar. The only thing you're not going to get as much, uh, and that's on the palette, but we'll get to that in a second. I do know, remember a big difference between the 4 and the 5 is the uh, truffle note. I used, to, I used to explain it as like a mushroom note, but after talking with Lee about what I was getting out of it, it just, uh, mm, it, uh, it's more of a truffle than it is a mushroom. And I think he's right. It's a uh, black, like that black truffle oil you get on pretty high end restaurants. It's extremely, extremely strong. If you ever decide to try it, you only want a little bitty speck of it because it's so intensely flavored. Uh, some people make the mistake of just doushing their food with it. Chefs make a big mistake with using it in their uh, food. Yeah, the the three twenty five, uh, three thirty is what I can usually find this for. I would say it's. I would love to see it for two fifty, two twenty five would be. <coughs> excuse me, ideal, but you have to remember it is twenty four year old whiskey, and it's forty eight percent. Um, it's kind of, it's a tough, it's a tough one, but I agree. Three, three thirty is a little, a little steep on that one. I, I would look for it for, you know, two fifty would be a, a sweet deal, I think. And, uh, hopefully it will come down in time, but you never know. I mean, it might even go up, unfortunately, since so many, so many people like this one. Um, yeah, I got similar notes before was the, uh, I talked about the tropical, the fruits, and uh, the Chinese five spice, how I originally explained it, but yeah, the star anise and the and the mixture of the nutmeg and the, I'm actually able to kind of decipher some of the the, the tones of the spices. High end steak. Uh, me personally, I would go with a quarry of reckon from Ardbeg, or um, hmm. I mean, because it's like a, having a steak, basically. But it depends on, I mean, if you're wanting, uh, if you're wanting um, something mild with your steak, then I would go with, uh, you know, maybe something light, like a Dalwini 15 or a, a, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something that's on the lighter end, like maybe an Akintoshin uh, or something like that. But, it, I mean, I like heavy scotches, even with steak, so I would go with a Cory Vrecken uh, or maybe... Um, um, the lore from Lafroig, I think, would be a good a good mix. Um, it's like steak Diane in a bottle, anyway. So you might as well have a double steak. <laughs> mm. That's a uh, maybe the tropical notes aren't as intense on this one as it was before. I think this is more of a berry. Uh, you know, all your red berries. The 4.1, I think, is more of a tropical with more of that truffle. Now, with this, oh, yeah, Lagavulin 8. It's very good. It's a breakfast dram, though, and you've got to be in the mood for just straightforward peat. You're not going to have any sherry, any other things. You're just going to have a nice peated breakfast dram with the Lagavulin 8. Uh, vanilla, you know, toffees and peat and a little bit of floral, maybe, but nothing uh, super complex. But it does have a nice peat bite to it. So just keep in mind what you're in for when you, you know, get that. Let's have a taste here. Mmm. The, um, very, very fruit floor forward. But the, quick, the great thing about the palate on this is where it gets even more complex, even more so than the nose. That the cherry cordial dark chocolate cherries really come through. The spiciness is still there, but you do get a little touch of that black truffle oil underneath in the in the back. 
thankfully on the five I like it better because it's not as intense as it was on the four. Um, if you like that kind of thing, you might like the four better. But uh, I like it there, but I don't want it to be too overwhelmingly strong. Mm. And the great thing about not just the palette, but the back, the finish of it, it's I would consider it long, and I would also would um, equate it to like a, a malted chocolate, like a Whopper. It has a really a really good Whoppery uh, finish first, and then at the very end of the finish, it goes into more of a real deep dark chocolate fudge, like a hot fudge cake or hot fudge sundae. Uh, that chocolate part, man, that's it's unreal. Very well done with the fruit, the sweet, and the uh, floral, and very well balanced. Age shows itself. It's something you can really, and I mean, pour you a little bit. Hopefully, it'll last you a long, long time, and uh, you know, get your money's worth. That's that's the catch. Is that you really have to take your time with this one. Uh, Good night, Santa Cruz. Thank you so much for stopping by, man. I appreciate it. I know it gets late for you guys once it gets to this point, but I, hopefully you guys will come back and uh, maybe watch, if you missed any part of it, watch uh, from the beginning. Oh, yes. The Dark Cove is excellent. Now, Cory Vrecken is more uh, in tuned with a Talisker because of the peppery notes you get out of it. The Talisker is a peppery giant. Very good. Very intense. It's strong. It's like 57% ABV as well. Uh, so it's not nothing to, you know, play around with. It's, you know, put a couple drops on it. Maybe you have it neat first if you if you can stand it. If that's not for you, put a couple drops on first before you add a ton of water. You don't want to kill the dram either. So, um, but yeah, I would I think the Quarry Reckon is, is right up there with the Uga Doll. If you like the Dark Cove and you already had the Uga Doll, Quarry Reckon is a obvious choice unless you can get your hands on some of the rarer ones um i also like the kelpie is probably one of the best offerings our big ever has ever done if you don't mind some uh it's kind of like a german breakfast uh pretzels mustard and it's really intense it's a very assertive flavor um if you don't mind that you're gonna love it uh but if you're more towards you just want a nice bite of peat kind of equivalent to a Lagavulin 8, then go for the Ardbeg Perpetuum. It's pretty basic vanilla peat. It's bitey peat, though. Uh, not really complex. It's probably not very well aged, either. There's no age statement on it. Like, uh, some of the other NASs are actually do have ages. Like, the Ardbog, for example, is a uh, is at least 11 years old, from what I was reading. So, a Dark Coat was your first Ardbeg. Man, you're lucky. You're so lucky. That was my probably probably fourth or fifth and that is my favorite of all time oh how did i meet him he is a cool low-key guy oh, i appreciate it um we uh met over at distiller.com um i when i was kind of getting into whiskey i watched a lot of reviewers like scotch for dummies scotch test dummies ralphie and uh you know the other ones and um i was trying to find my niche i mean what can i do to uh, what could I do to give back to the Whiskey Society as much as I get out of it? And um, the, um, you know, writing to me is, is something I can actually do fairly well. So I thought, well, let's just start out and just write what I get out of it on a just basic level. Uh, I wasn't doing like tasting or nosing reviews. I was just doing like reviews like, well, this dram reminds me of this and you know I got this out of it or this one's not as good as you know these other two try this instead I kept it really basic and then the more I did it and the more I found some of these other guys like Lee and Paul and Prane and, and Scott uh, I got looking at their notes as, as I was getting into it and getting the taste and getting the finish and even some of these guys do the dry glass review which is top notch is pretty nice uh because you do get a whole different experience out of a dry glass too after if you drink it and you go back after you know let it sit for 
10, 15 minutes, go back to that nose, you get a whole other experience. But anyway, um, I started getting more uh, in-depth with my reviews. I even have a trademark where every time I review a, a whiskey, I'll give it a song that goes along with it that reminds me of that experience so I don't forget it. Uh, a good example was one was a Glen, a Glen Spey that somebody had during our, our review of all the distilleries. And when I drank and, and nosed and experienced it, it had a ton of vegetal stuff in it. It was so vegetal that I, I just could not get my mind off of all these green vegetables and herbs that, that I was getting off of this. It was not very appealing to me when my, my thing. Uh, but I was like trying to think of a song and there's an old NXS song when they were a punk band, believe it or not, before they were really popular in the 80s. In the early 80s, late 70s, they were a punk band from Australia. And they had a song called We Are the Vegetables. So that's what popped in my head when I, when I experienced that. And now that every time I think of that dram, I think of that song, and, and, it, and it, it goes hand in hand. And there's other drams like that, like the, the Springbank 12 Burgundy. As soon as I set, set that and nosed it, it's funky as hell. And I was like, you know what? This is like the average white band's picking up the pieces. It's, it's, it's just got that horn section and it's got that bass funky thing going. It's, it's, I just equate music to, to this experience sometimes. It just helps me sort it out. But anyway. But yeah, we met over to Stillard to make long story short. <laughs> And these guys can write some kick-ass reviews. So if you ever get a chance, uh, pop over to distiller.com, search on um, Lee and some of those other guys. Why have I not tried the Ardbeg yet? Love the Log of the 116 or uh, Ardbeg uh, doesn't get the, I think, the proper respect it deserves. It was close, actually, in the 90s uh, for a lot of time, or 80s. Was it 80s or 90s? It was one of the two. It was a whole decade they were closed down. And um, it was because the... Uh, uh, how much is the 23 and it's available? It is available. It's like five to $600. I thankfully didn't have to pay for it because I cannot afford to buy that dram. Um, it is available. It's very hard to get uh, unless you can afford it. Uh, you will never see it probably below $500, I'm thinking. Um, is it worth it? Man, see, that's the tough thing. It is better, I think, than the Brook Lottie uh, uh, 5.1. I think it's better even than the McAllen Fine Oak 21, which was an outstanding dram. And Paul and Lee both like that one better. But for me, I'm, I am i got to have a little peat with my kick-ass fruit cocktail. i got to have, you know, i got to have more of a full experience. So I go for the Ardbeg 23, also known as 20-something. Um, but... Pro cost wise, I think it's similar to a Fine Oak 21 from McCallum, but we're talking some crazy money here. And unless you know you're doing extremely well or you have a, a lot of savings or you've saved up over time, it's really hard to get some of those drams, it's just really tough. Uh, but you know, you know, if I had the money, is it worth it? Yes, but it, is, is it worth you know not getting all the other things that Ardbeg offers before that? I would, I would experiment with some of their other easier to find things that are around a hundred dollars like air verdes uh perpetuum dark cove we might be able to find for a couple hundred it's it's out there but you have to really look uh kelpie is easy to find still uh the new grooves uh, should be uh available here in around june that'll be uh, hopefully more readily available with the new bottling the cr i know is hard to find it's popping up secondary for like three hundred dollars it is worth it, though, if you want that intense, raw experience. But I, if it was me and I did not find the CR, I would wait till the regular one came out. And then if I enjoyed that, maybe then going back to the CR later and saving up and trying to find it again. But um, secondary market is brutal. It's just, it's just like triple the price, right? As soon as you can't get something out of the store, it seems like it just triples in price no matter what it is. That's what kills me. And thanks for the, the thumbs up, guys, the likes. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, it's, uh, it's fun to do this. And, and the more we talk about things, the more we all kind of learn, you know, about scotch in general and i like to to fixate a lot on the the isla and the campbelltown but i kind of venture out sometimes and, and go to other ones if i think they're worthy you know or if i just want to get you guys a, my 
you know, take on something. And even if I don't like something, it doesn't mean you might not like it. Sometimes it's, if I explain the characteristics of it, and you're like, you know, that's still in my zone, my wheelhouse, then, you know, it might be worth taking that venture anyway, even if I'm not into it. But I'll tell you why I don't like something if I don't, just like, you know, some of the, like the Nika Takasuru regular dram, the pure malt, um, it, it was okay, but it just didn't give me any uh, finish. I, I like a really heavy flavor. It's very light. It's very delicate. If you like that kind of stuff, then that might be more of your thing. Um, and some of the vegetal floral stuff, like I'm not a big Kilhoman and Isla, 100% Isla uh, fan. That's a particular bottle. It's very floral forward. Not my thing. Um, but all the other stuff that they do is perfect. I liked a lot. Gorm, the Seneg, the, uh, you name it. The red excuse me, the red cast matured, it's all, it's all perfect, but, um, anyway, going back to, uh, yeah, definitely check out those guys in the distiller, they do a great job, and, uh, thanks for the uh, subscription there, Whiskey Thief, and, uh, I'll, uh, try to look you up, it looks like you might have a channel yourself, maybe, with that, I like that, that cartoon guy, and the, uh, the name is, is good, so, Lechag, oh, Lechag, I did like the Lechag 10. I, I have only had the 10 so far, I have to admit. But I have had a place right now that's got the 18 sitting there. And I've had my eye on it. And I'm wondering if I should pull the trigger. I think I probably should because I did enjoy the 18. I'm sorry, the 10. And um, it's right up there with... Um, I'd say it's more... The P is good. It's definitely a whole hell of a lot better than a Tumman Tool or an Anyok... Like the flower, I didn't like that much. The Tumman Tool PD Tang, I did not like that very much. But the uh, the Lechek Tin, is, it kind of has, it reminds me of a little bit of a Kilhoman, uh, done well, like their Mockier Bay kind of thing. I, I like that. Um, the 18 has got to be well rounded and refined, I would think. Uh, Tobamori is the regular distillery that does uh, Lechek, and I've heard that they're pretty good. Uh, the sh one looks more sherry than the other. The, I wonder if it's the 19, because the 18, if I remember looking at it, to me, I didn't get the sherry characteristics looking at the bottle. So you might be onto something. The 19 might be the sherry one. Me, personally, I like sherry influence mixed with my peat. So I would go for the 19. Um, now I haven't had a hangover with scotch. It's kind of funny how that works. Um. PX cask, ooh, yeah, see, that's one of the, I've had a lot of Kilhomans, and the PX cask, unfortunately, is one of the ones I have not had yet, I've got to get my hands on that one, the 19-year Marcella cask is awesome, hello, everyone, hey, Duncan, thanks for stopping by, man, uh, is that the Leche that you're talking about, Duncan, uh, Duncan, the, um, that Marsala cask, maybe that's the one he's thinking of when he's talking about a sherry, possibly, but, uh, I'll have to, oh, okay, yes, okay, that's, that would be definitely awesome because I love the Bunahaven uh, 13 Marsala cask I just had. And if it's anything like that, which I think it, I'm sure it is, plus the 19 uh, years, wow. That's got to be something, man. It's got to be. Um, you have it, you have it, but you haven't opened it yet. The, um, I think you're going to like that a lot. I think, I think that, um. I think that uh, it, it it doesn't disappoint. Definitely, that's for sure. Let's have another sip of this and then go back to the. Let's go into the Lafroy before it gets too late. <laughs> mm. Keeping all my liquids away from my computer and away from my phone. I apologize again for the lighting and the uh, the sound and the picture and all that, but. The show must go on, and uh, this is the best way I can do it until I got my computer fixed. So, I really appreciate you guys uh, sticking around and um, hanging out. This this finish on that black arts is unreal. It's, next to the palette, it's probably my. Uh, I mean, the nose is damn good too. I mean, they're all three are good. I'm just debating which one's my favorite: the nose, the palette, or the finish. And um, man, it's all good. <laughs> Makes you wonder if it's worth that 300, 325, 330, but man, I don't know. That's awfully steep. If I was a lawyer, maybe. <laughs> you know how that goes. I mean, if I could just, you know, toss two or three hundred dollars or something, not even think about it, then it'd be a hell of a lot easier to 
deal with that. But I'm just thankful that I have some very generous friends. And I try to return the favor anytime I can. So hopefully, uh, I saw Lee was posting on Distiller earlier. Uh, I don't think he's been on the channel today. Or I didn't see him in, on the uh, Scotch for Dummies uh, chat. So hopefully he's doing all right. Um, Paul was under the weather, unfortunately, right before the fest. Uh, so uh, he's doing a little better. Um, that's always the worst when you pay some crazy money for a whiskey fest and you don't get your money back and you have to go. Uh, good man, I was about to hit the pit. The telex went live and had to stick around. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. This has been sitting out for quite a while, this uh, Lafroig 18. Can't believe I found two bottles of this. This is insane. It's just crazy. Right, let's have a little cleanse here with some hydration. you got to hydrate. Oh. Well, Never make that mistake of not doing it, that's for sure. Huh. I am surprised by how runny the 18 is from a swoop, but it is only 40, what is this? 40, is it 48? Yeah, 48. But that's, that's not bad. That's a pretty good ABV. I've never had this before. It uh, is an older, it's white, you know, the white label. Uh, but not the green. They have an older green one that's different, I've heard. Uh, there's an old, old school 18 that's a green label that has more of a... I'm trying to remember. I think it was more of a... I want to say that one was a little more forward intense. This one supposedly is the one that's a little laid back. But this is the one that Cast Code said that, you know, if you let it, give, let it breathe and give it time, like we, we have, we've been letting it sit out for 40 minutes. Um, mm, I do get the peat smoke in there. It's not heavy, heavy, but, you know. Hmm. Get a little barbecue in there. It's funny, you do get the TCP iodine that you expect, the, you know, the hospital antiseptic, which I know some people get turned off by that, but... That's Lafroig's trademark. It's to me, it's beautiful. I love it. Band aids. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but it's so good. Get some floral notes in there too. Maybe a little chocolate. Some um, deep. Oh man, dark, dark floral. Not lilac, but uh. Oh, would I go for it? Independent, oh, 18 berries. Oh, man. You see, the problem with berries to me is I've had um, the Tormor 21. We've also tried a couple of their bottlings. Um, me, personally, I have not had a good experience with berries enough to tell someone else to shoot for that. Uh, I would be apprehensive. Um, if I saw a different... Like if I saw a creative whiskey company, or if I saw uh, Douglas Lang, um, maybe even Gordon McPhail. Um, Signatory I've heard is pretty good. Um, who am I not thinking about that does great independent bottlings? Those are the big boys. Those are the ones I would stick with. I mean, Berries has been around since 18, I think, 98 or the 1800, like late 1800s, but... Even so, uh, they're more of a winery than a than I think a whiskey thing primarily, and I think what after I had the three or four bottlings by Berries, I just personally didn't get enthused enough to go and get another one. Uh, I I think I would stick to my guns on that one, but uh, I know it's funny because I had an Alexander Murray uh, version of a Glen Keith twenty one as well, uh, or nineteen. I think it was uh, no, it's twenty one. It's twenty one. Uh, I like the Glen Keith better than the Tormor, but Lee and, uh, I think even Paul like the Tormor better, so it's, it's, unfortunately, a lot of this is subjective, too, uh, because with the Glen Keith, I liked more of the richer fruit with the tobacco flavor. To me, the Tormor had some nice lighter fruit, like watermelon, honeydew, cantaloupe, that kind of stuff, but it was extremely delicate. The Glen Keith, to me, was a little more powerful a little sweeter a little 
the fruit stood out more. The tobacco was stronger. I, I just like a, or I think maybe a, I don't know. Lee's usually likes a harder flavor too. So I don't know what, I, maybe I wasn't getting um, the complexity as much out of the Tormor that I should have with like the floral and the herbal stuff. But I don't really get into those flavors. So it's kind of a tough, you know, maybe they appreciate that side of it more than I do. So it's kind of a tough, uh, a tough recommendation on independent bottlings with that, but um, you, uh, one I know that you cannot go wrong with this Creative Whiskey Company. They, I've I've had several of their bottles, and all of them have been fan freaking tastic. Hmm, <laughs> like the nose one, the Sulfroy eighteen. <laughs> I like it. Getting some custard in there. Your typical vanilla notes, but. There's some nice sugary floral stuff going on too, along with that peat in the back. It, it's not as, uh, you know, it's not going to be like a tin cast drink. Uh, thanks a lot, Loch Ness, for sticking around for a while. Let's have a sip and see what we get here. Hmm. Some ginger in there too. Peat smoke. Refined though. Not in your face. Creamy. Custardy. Buttery. Mouthful's a little thin for my taste. For, you know, surprisingly. Uh, Lafroig's, uh, I, I couldn't remember if, uh, I haven't had a tin cast rate in a long time. Uh, or the uh, regular tin, or um, even the triple wood. I mean, it's been a long time since I've I've, I've had a, a regular Lafroy guy. I had the, the carriages 2014, but that's a whole other beast in itself. I wouldn't try to compare that to this. Um, this is a little thinner than than my favorite. So if I'm gonna ding it on anything so far, it's the only thing I probably would be kind of like eh, I'm not sure about that, but. I'm not gonna. I'm not bitching. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm not bitching. Um, great finish to uh, the smoke and the pea come out in the finish, even more so than on the initial taste, which is kind of cool. And some of these older Islas, you'll find out that it's reverse on the uh, peat smoke. You you don't get it really much at all in the nose. You get a little bit on the palate, and you get a lot of it on the finish, which is kind of cool how that works. So I'm getting my campfire, but I'm getting a reverse campfire is what I'm, I'm kind of getting here. The nose is probably my favorite thing next to the the finish, maybe. The palette's good. It's, let me give it for another taste. I miss one of these really so I must have a peat punch, but once the look like Yeah, that's that's what you get out of this guy, I think. Definitely have to explore this. Take your time with it. That, it's kind of a, a real nice caramely peat. Not toffee though, more of a buttery caramel. With some fruit in there, but it's real subtle. It's funny, that's, I think that's what makes it so good, is like all, there's a, a ton of different flavors, but all of them are so subtle that you really have to search to get it. But once you put it all together, it's like a really nice combination. That's the only way I can really explain really well-aged scotch, is think of just throwing 20 things into a glass, all equally good, but all subtle. And when you sip, yeah, you might not be able to get every single note out of it to your liking as far as, oh, pal, there's that big, you know, plum, or bam, there's that big whatever. But with this, man, the combination is fantastic. And that finish, man, this, that's growing on me, too. It's like a, a nice espresso. It's got a mocha coffee, that smoke, too. Campfire still there. Not as intense, though, you know, of course, as a tin or a uh, castring through a lure, but 
I kind of like it. Like, you know, I kind of like it. Like Duncan was saying, I mean, you want to have a... Sometimes you want to get in the boat. You want to go freaking fast. You want to jump some, some waves and go crazy. Sometimes you want to get in the party barge, the pontoon, and you want to have a sip of something and just cruise around at five miles an hour for like three hours and listen to some Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of party boat. <laughs> Isla Pete or Orkney Pete? Ooh, man. These are good questions. Oh, wow. I tell you what. My favorite Pete, and don't tell Ardbeg this, is I do like, I do love Ardbeg's Pete, and I do love their distillery, their offerings the best. The, the just out of the box, straightforward glass, no frills. The best glass to me is Lagavulin 16 for the peat. I like that earthy peat. It's middle of the road. It's not crazy like an Ardbeg or a Little Froig. It's not as smoky, mild as a Kalila or uh, maybe basic as a Kilhoman. It's kind of in the middle. Uh, but but Highland Park has got some nice peatiness to it on occasion it's just so it's just so different with its earthiness it's it's it, orkney peat is earthy like a lagavulin peat but it's a little more uh, someone was explaining to me the difference there's like um i don't know if it's the bogs or the or the uh something to do with i think the uh soil is different in the orkney area than the isla area to the point where uh, there's just more soul somehow, I think, in one versus the other uh, when it comes to the earthiness. I think the Orkney might actually be earthier, uh, but the Isla might be more briny, saltier. Uh, I can't remember what the deal was with that, but personally, I like a log of one peat above Highland Park, but I do enjoy a Highland Park peat. That's the Orkney one. Um, it, 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 yeah, overall, I'd say Isla, if I had to pick one of the two. But um, I also like Isle of Sky. The Talisker's Pete is is a very, very salty briny, but I like that sometimes, too. It's really on, on the mood, you know? All this is based on mood, because sometimes, you know, I might want a Sherry Bomb instead of a, a, an Isla deal, and I'll, I'll sit down and I'll think, well, do I want a Abelauer Abana, or do I want a Glendronic, you know, 18 or 21, or do I want a... Um, uh, even just if I want to go basic, uh, there's a Glamorgy La Santa that's just as you know good. Yeah, Orkney has that heather flavor. That's that's true. The the Highland Park is yeah, it's it's it's, its own taste. It, yeah, I, I can't compare it to anything else. Um, the fifteen and eighteen are damn good bottles. Um, but if you may force me to pick between a Lagavulin sixteen and a Highland Park eighteen. That's a tough one. Peat and malts with the others. Um, when you're uh, Richie, I'd say the Kalila is more of a smoke than a peat. It's more on the smokier end. Peat to me is more of that sparky, uh, gritty, pow flavor. The smoke is more of the you know the mustiness. The the round, um, you know, what I'm, I think, I hope you know what I'm trying to say, but uh, Kalila is on the smoky end, the Ardbeg's on the Froig's on the peaty end. It's it's night and day difference to me on that. Uh, I would never, I, I've never had a peaty Kalila really uh, that I can think of. Uh, 12 is smoky as hell. Uh, I do have a Moke that I'm going to be reviewing next time. Uh, that I just got, uh, thankfully, before Master of Malt decided to stop selling again to the United States, which really pisses me off. It's weird. They they, they they sold to Maryland, and then all of a sudden they stopped selling to every state except 10 states. And then I was like, okay, well, then I found a friend in D.C. that was like, you know, you could just have them delivered to me, that's fine. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, the problem was is that then they opened it back up to Maryland. So I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. So I put an order in, I got a... Uh, a Lefroig Ankomar, which we'll be uh, reviewing at a later date. The uh, Kalila Mok, which we'll be doing at a later date. Uh, and um, 
the uh, a Bowmore number one because it was on a flash sale. Probably not the best bottle or offering from Bowmore, but I thought it was worth a try for twenty five dollars. I mean, you can't beat that for a price. Um, it, it's got to be as good as a Highland Park Magnus, I would hope, or a Johnny Walker Black, or any other bottle you can find for you know twenty dollars. Yeah, you need to try them all. That's true. Yeah. I rarely ever have a bad bottle in Isla, put it that way, uh, you know, or what I consider to be bad, not my, my forte or wheelhouse or whatever, but uh, I have a hell of a lot more misses when I go to the, the Highlands or the Lowlands or something like that than I do in Isla or Campbelltown. I just have better a better enjoyment overall, thankfully. Uh, there's a couple exceptions, like Lamorgi, uh, other than the original, I've enjoyed a lot of their offerings. Uh, Talisker, of course, is uh, Islands, Hollow Sky, uh, Glendronic's great, um, I think they're Highlands, or, uh, are they Speyside, maybe? I can't remember, but great Sherry Bomb, and then um, um, Avalara does an okay job with them, but I've heard, the, I mean, the 18's good, but I haven't had the others, I heard they're pretty crappy, but... Maybe approach that bridge later on. Ball Blair is a great distillery. Uh, I love the 99. Uh, I'd love to try the 80s and the... There's like a... I think there's an 80-something and there's a... Uh, oh, a 2000-something. I'd love to try those. But uh, overall, it's a safe it's a safe place to be. Oh, this is so good. I really got lucky. So the moral of the story, guys, is don't be afraid to go to that not so great part of town. As long as they have, you, you've heard they have a decent scotch selection, it's always worth a look. And that's what happened to me today. I found this place that's not, you know, it's not the worst part of town either because they sell scotch, but it's not in the best part of town. And I figure, well, you know, it's worth a look. They, I heard they had a good selection. Never been there. Would never have dreamed of going there for anything. Walk in. Uh, the people were really nice. To, I think they owned it because it was like a, a husband and wife deal. And uh, they let me actually go behind the the uh, you know the counter where the scotch was because it was right behind the cash registers. And uh, went in and, and, and looked. And, and I just saw those Lafroig's 18s like staring out at me like... like I just couldn't believe it. And they actually had uh, the edition 2 and 3 of McKellen. I was hoping they had the 1 because I would have crapped my pants right there if they had a, a McKellen 1st uh, edition. But uh, they didn't have that. But they did have a, a pretty good selection. So I'm going to go back and take another look and make sure I didn't miss anything. Because sometimes you just find a gem that, that's dusty in the back and nobody knows what it is. And, uh, you know, it's definitely well worth... Uh, Taking your time and, and looking at even some stuff that you're not really all that familiar with. You might find, you know, ask your buddy, hey, have you heard about this? Um, yeah, like like the Tudor 16s or, or, you know, whatever you're looking for. And they might say, hey, you know, that's really rare. You should pick that up. Uh, that's worth, you know, three or four hundred dollars now. How much is that? How much they want it for? They might say, well, they only want 70, 80 bucks for it. So, uh, yeah, that's what I heard too. Uh, I had the eighteen, and it was it was. I don't think it was bad uh, the Abel Hour, uh, but I do prefer the Ebena. Um Thankfully, I can still find that Abana for eighty to ninety dollars. It's not over a hundred, thank God. But um, the eighteen was ex more expensive, but the finish wasn't as good on it to me. Um, I've heard horror stories of some of their younger stuff. Uh, also with like Elberfeldy, I never tried them, but I've heard that uh, that's another one to uh, be kind of weary about. But I don't want to knock something I haven't tried yet. I might try the Apple Hour 16 and, and love it, but you never know. I'm just going by word of mouth on that one. But uh, if it's not, if the 18 is not as good as the Abana, yeah, I think I might stick with that more than something else anyway. Hmm. so lucky on this one so i'm gonna save a bottle um i might trade it for lee for something um i know he's wanting to get rid of one of his uh glendronic ported peat woods but uh peated port would i should say but um 
I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that one. It's just... I wish the finish was a little bit more. And you have to let that bottle... I mean, you got to have to let that pour sit out for 45 minutes um, easy without, you know... Oh, for 179 Oh, that's... A, see, that's when you buy that. That would be a perfect deal. Yeah, Glen Jordan 12 is, is the no-brainer for $66. Here is what it goes for. Um, if I want a sherry, that's that's true. Yeah, the Abana is like a special Christmas bottle, I'd say. That's what I got it for. Um, it's great for, like, wintertime, fruit cake, uh, nutmeg, cinnamon, cherry bomb. Uh, love it. But uh, run of the just everyday sipper, sherry style for the price. It's hard to beat a Glendronic 12, really. You're, you're, you're pretty much on the money with that. And it's hard to find something that's even comparable to that, uh, as far as sherry, pure strength. Uh, a lot of the other guys are the Glen Goines, and they're just a little milder when it comes to the uh, mouthfeel and the flavor and all that. So, unless you get upwards with age, and if you get upwards with age, and you get upwards with price. So, it all, you know, comes back to, to that. You get what you pay for sometimes, but sometimes you get a lucky enough to be able to afford a. A, a decent uh, 12, 15, and hopefully the revival comes back. I've heard it will next year. Uh, the Glendronic 15 will be awesome. Uh, 21 is good, but uh, it's very pricey. Uh, here it is 289, I think, from what I looked at. Let's see, I've got a bunch of prices here in front of me from uh, my favorite store. I remember the uh, it was on the higher end of like and, and the reason is in Maryland they sell really high here because they sell so well um, but um, I might have to do some digging hold on one second let's see I just had it a little bit ago which is really sad that I'm missing uh, here we go yeah, two uh thirty nine ninety nine for the twenty one and one eighty nine ninety nine for the eighteen. Pretty steep for you know, from what I've heard other parts of the country it's a lot cheaper. So uh maybe I can talk uh someone into getting something for me or I'll just take a I'll just yeah, I can't go to the Astro Samaltia anymore. Uh hopefully I think someone sent me a message with some other choices, uh to buy from so hopefully I'll be able to still get something delivered and uh, yeah the, the, the 18 is no joke so it's kind of you know I mean even the 12 itself I mean it's good for 66 I mean uh, I know it's not as good as the you know the 18 I, I think when the 15 comes back out I think that's going to be my sweet spot for a little bit better than the 12 by itself, but not, you know, not as crazy money uh, like the 18 and 21. Uh, at least on, you know, having on the bar on a regular basis kind of thing. But we'll see when we get there. Well, guys, I better get going because I have to tell work tomorrow. And um, really appreciate you all stopping by. It's been fun as usual. And uh, I, I know it's hard to find big time, but, you know, Hopefully you'll find that gem in the liquor store like I did with this, these two Lafroy 18s. That's why I wanted to review and uh, see if it was as good as I heard. And it does not disappoint. Uh, the Black Arts 5.1 is a um, a five star dram as the um, I'd say the the Lafroy 18 is a oh man 4.75 because of the mouthfeel is just so thin. Everything else is perfect. Pretty much, I mean, really. Um, I just that's 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 my take on it. Um, so um, we'll we'll revisit the lore. I, I've I've reviewed it on the distiller, but I haven't done a re video review on it. So that might be a, a good mouthfeel that might actually beat out the eighteen. Uh, it's just hard to beat that refinement of an eighteen. It's just so so good. I, I missed that last comment. Uh, I think it was from Duncan. Uh, but if you can, uh, if I miss something, just send me a comment uh, after the fact, and when the video will go to the uh, to YouTube, uh, just go back and, and type a question or a comment you had, and I'll be happy to answer it. Uh, Salon Shavah for now, and uh, good night.